So we're going to be playing some Firewatch. So I played this game like two months ago, so I have already played this, but fuck it, I want to play it again. I want to play it on stream. So, here we go, let's just dive straight in, shall we? But that was just some free roam shit I was doing to do some tests. I think I have to actually interact with this. So, this is the introduction. It's kind of like a choose your adventure type thing, type story. You see Julia. She's about your age, late 20s, laughing with well dressed professors and grad students from nearby CU Boulder. You, Henry, uh, are out drinking with your pals. You approach her. You are drunk. <laughs> okay, so basically, like I said, choose your own adventure. So, um,. Let's try and go with the less socially awkward one. So, watch your, you know, major. You slur the word major and it smells like cause. You give an awkward smile. Evolutionary biology, she says, and I'm a professor. Cool, you reply. What's yours, she asks. He sniffs the air. Toxicology? Was that a burn, you ask? He says, definitely. Worried she hurt your feelings, she asks if you want to split a cheeseburger. One week later, you are Julia's boyfriend. That was pretty fast, wasn't it? Take a backpack, why not? Um, okay, cool. We have to get in the truck, let's have a quick look around. I don't think there's anything. This game is full of like little hidden like Easter eggs and stuff. I just throw it in there. Nothing, nothing fragile in there, I guess. No laptop or iPad. Chuck it on. You date for over a year. She drives you absolutely nuts. It's great. You move in. You share an apartment near the school with a view of the mountains. You two drink beers out on the deck. You drink beer just about as anywhere. Life is good. Julia wants to get a dog. As a scruffy, undersized beagle, Julia is in love. Uh, she wants to bring him... wants to bring it with her to class. Um, there's also an intimidating but gentle-eyed German Shepherd. Nothing bad could happen to Julia while walking this dog. It's badass. Well, obviously we'll go with a beagle. I mean, it's what Julia wants. She names him Bucket. A name for a dog. Look, it's a good dog, and a week later, you've totally forgotten about the other one. Aww. Sad. Julia loves him, and you love him too. It's all out on the deck. It's summer at half nine in the afternoon, and the heat still radiates off the high desert. What do you think about kids, she asks. Kids? They're not very smart, or good at much. I'm saying if you and I have some, a couple of little idiots. Okay, uh, you know what, let's go for it, that would be pretty good. In that case, we should probably get married. Yeah, I would like that, you say. That's I'm quite romantic. These kids are going to be screwed up enough, it's probably for the best that their parents are hitched. You say she's absolutely right. Okay, so we've got a backpack, yes I do. Don't forget to check in, no fireworks, okay, so follow the path, shall we? Game is so colourful. Open a few frames every now and again, but there's nothing I can do about that. It's a Thursday night and Julia is four hours late. She doesn't call, you're worried and getting angrier by the minute. She walks in after you've gone to bed. She's not quite drunk, but she's been she's clearly been having a fun time. You fight when she gets between the sheets. Uh oh, two bad choices here. Do I get mad or do I ignore her? I ignore her. You don't touch each other all night. 
The next day you feel guilty for being so angry and uh, ask her about her evening. She says it was great. You hold on to a tiny pill of resentment. You make some coffee and go to work. Julia still likes to draw. She draws plants for, from her research. She draws all the places you go. She draws you. Okay, uh... I frolic like a Victoria's Secret model like that. It's good. Very nice. Lovely. Bit too hot and spicy for her, I think. Oh god, that, it already looks like the forest on fire. Two forks. Okay, eight more miles. God damn. Go do me like a, I don't know, a push bike? Uh, stare at the sun, go blind. Won't be able to watch fires then. During the summers, you and Julia enjoy walking Bucket at night. There's a festival in town. It brings in folks from faraway places. One of them tries to mug you with a knife. Whoa! I came out of nowhere. I mean, just read the sentence again. So there's a festival in town. Oh, lovely. It brings in folks from far away places and they mug you with a fucking knife. Brilliant. Great. Oh, God, no. Bucket gets kicked. Well, oh, this is taking a fucking turn, isn't it? The be ba fuck the the dog Julie yells. She gets flustered and has trouble speaking when she is stressed. You confront the attacker. I'm going to beat his goddamn face and he kicked my dog. Bastard. Your arms get cut up, but you beat the guy to a pulp. You don't feel very tough. You cry your eyes out before the cops show up. Julie asks to take a different path from that day forward. You say okay, you don't want to go that way either. From then on, you walk by the river. Plans have kids have got waylaid by work. Julia gets offered a job at Yale. Yale is in Connecticut, 2,000 miles away. It's a great job, associate department chair. She wants to move. You absolutely do not. Okay, well, I'm not going to try and convince her to take the job. It sounds like a good opportunity. Let's try and choose the better options. Uh, agree if she's able to commute back and forth. You ask her if she'll commute back and forth. You don't want to move to Connecticut. Uh, Connecticut. She says that'll be hard, but she'll do it if you won't move. You tell her not to pass it up if it's what she wants. If she agrees, she flies back to Boulder three times each semester. Must be expensive. Julie is sent home from Yale on paid leave after having an episode. She lost it on a colleague for borrowing books that were important to her research. She didn't remember she had happily loaned them to him just two days prior. She was fine crying in the stairwell. He said that maybe you guys should talk to someone about it. You make macaroni and drink wine and try to forget about it. We're going to try and talk to somebody about this. After seeing multiple doctors and having many tests, they are worried that Julia might be suffering from early onset dementia. It's 41. You both decide to keep it a secret for now. This is a great start to the game, so... Obviously you just set up a temporary camp still on the way there, I guess. I read a journal. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, hmm. Didn't know I had that there. Fuck. <laughs> uh, Bucket is getting older. Julia comments that it's kind of nice because he gets in less trouble around the house. A week later, she goes back to university. Julia's affliction gets worse, she can't remember things in class. Her research is in shambles, she drives her car to the next town over for no particular reason and has been brought home by the police. She is devastated. She is sent home on permanent medical leave. Some days you get the Julia who calls you a dope and your unborn child little idiots. Other days you get a stranger. She pulls you into bed to make love. After five minutes, she goes into a, a panic, believing her dad is at the door. You tell her family they are crushed and begin to make trips to and from their home in Australia to visit her. For a while, your friends come by with little things to brighten the day, but she gets worse. 
You spend your days following Julia around the house. You count the seconds between the two weekly visits from Daniel, the nurse. He suggests that Julia could live somewhere else, somewhere with 24-hour care, a home. It sits with you for a couple of months. I don't know. Mm, it's a tough one. Uh, I don't know, I think I'm a full time care facility, I think. I don't know. This is a depressing start to the game. Jeez. <laughs> uh, Alright. Back to the lovely wilderness. Trees, sunlight, people moving forward. Forget about all that shit. A new painting that might get me banned off Twitch. Who knows? Who knows? It's fine. Fine. I don't care. All good. All lovely. Deer! Or is it a stag? It's a stag. It's got horns. Her family agrees with your decision. You find a fantastic place in Boulder and move her there. You see her every day. And then every other day. You go out to the bar with your old friends. It's not the same. You get the feeling that every wife tells her husband, if you ever put me in a home like Henry did, I will cut your balls off. You slowly decide not to see your old friends that much. Julia's sister Suzanne moves to Boulder to be close with her. She visits her every day, you go with her some of the time. Susan buys you an old typewriter and urges you to use it if you won't see a therapist. You won't. You always really like Susan. Are we going in a fair direction? Months go by. Oh, Bucket died. God damn. This guy doesn't get a fucking break. Julia doesn't re remember him when you tell her. Sometimes it takes her a minute to lock in on you. In the back of your mind, you believe it's because you see her less and less, and seeing her less and less makes her forget you more, you think. Summer is coming up, and you see an ad in the paper for a job. And you take it. Okay, there it is. Ad Tower is going to be our home. This is the job. We are on Firewatch. We go into the middle of a forest and watch for fires. Sounds like a really peaceful job. But then you have to live in this, like, I guess. Guard post, I guess. Lookout tower, that's it. For well, ages, I guess. Look at this game, it is beautiful! I've got to tap it somewhere else over there, look at that. That's the for a fair lookout. I'm trying to look around. I think there's something around here. I'm not sure. Oh, it's all boarded up. Well, I guess I do if nobody's using it. Kind of makes sense. Don't want people like breaking in, I guess, or we're just protecting it from the weather. Or animals. I mean, like what? What animals would be in a forest like this? Raccoons or like squirrels raiding it and breaking stuff. There we go. This is our new home. Turn on the power. There we go. Oh, Hello, lovely. Uh, hello, radio woman. Oh, she has to talk through the radio. Um, hello? Um, hello? Whoever this is? It's Henry, right? Yeah. I'm Delilah. Yeah, that's what the guy said on the phone. So, what's wrong with you? Excuse me? People take this job to get away from something. So, what's wrong? What's wrong with you? That's a great idea. Go ahead. Look, I just hiked for two days, so I don't really follow whatever it is you're doing right now. You take a stab at what's wrong with me. Fine, then can I... What, sleep? Forever? Sure, buddy. Okay, now go ahead. Okay. Nobody back home can stand you. Let's be mean. Let's be really okay, mean. You're probably out here because nobody back home can stand you. Which, after this brief introduction, is not a big shock. Oh, damn. Ouch. 
Uh, yeah. I'll chalk that up to you being tired and grumpy. Well, I'd better get some sleep then. One sec. Now it's my turn. Okay. Good night. Bye. Let's see. I don't know anything about you. I say you got fired from your job and have finally decided to write your novel. That's the sort of bullshit reason you'll find a man out in the woods. Good night. Welcome to the job. <laughs> okay. Oh, I guess we reply to that. No. Firewatch, day one. Okay, so I didn't end up using the time right now. Well, I guess good afternoon. <laughs> you probably slept like a rock. Anyway, uh, there's still a few hours of daylight to get some work in. I can see you at your desk, so call me when you're ready. There you can. What? That's not creepy. Uh, sorry, guess I slept in. Hey, sorry, guess I slept in. You got a relaxing, what, 14 hours of sleep? Ooh. Yeah, Jesus. You were counting? Six? 6.45. Whoops. Don't worry about it. That hike puts everyone out of commission for a day or two. But now that you're up, let me quickly get you acquainted with the job. There's a thing in the middle of your room with a round map on it. Do you see it? Uh, this thing. Okay, yeah, I see it. This is the Osborne Firefinder, invented in 1914 by W.B. Osborne? You use this to spot, you guessed it, fi- What the fuck? What is it? Nothing, um... You, uh, you use this to... Oh, fuck me! Good God, going on? language lady. Out your west-facing window. Are you seeing what I'm seeing? West, uh, and... Are those fucking fireworks? Oh, shit, yeah. Whoa, that's not legal, right? Uh, no. You need to get down there right now and stop them. Fire danger is through the fucking roof. Is that really my job? Your job is whatever I say it is. Look, the closest ranger is like two days away. Go down there and set them straight. Right, day one. I uh, kick the shit out of them. Can I write them a ticket? I'm not really into discipline. So what... Do you think you can handle that? Yeah, what do I do is find them. Do I write them a ticket? Easy there, Dirty Harry. Well? Get going. You'll probably need a rope to get down the shale between you and the lake, if I remember right. There should be one in the supply box on the way. The code is 1234. It's actually that for all of them. Fantastic, nobody will think of that. Um, smart. Convenient, I guess. Convenient. That's one word for it. Yeah. So I read during the introduction, I thought when he said he won't use it, or he won't, he won't do it, that he was not going to use a typewriter, but I guess he just said that it's not going to go to therapy. But looks like he is using the typewriter. And I looked at this earlier. Photograph of me and Julia. I mean, massive. Hairy arms, proper woodsman, aren't I? I'm like born for this job. And Julia's doing the typical like selfie, like terrible selfie, where your like camera hides your face. It's terrible. It's useless. Useless picture. Oh, so that was a fucking difficult <laughs> introduction to the game. Um it starts off nice. Immediately turns around to kick you in the balls and the heart. But uh, that's kind of what this game is. Do I need to take this with me? I don't think I can. Okay. Okay, so like I said, I have already played this game before. So, I thought it would be a good idea to stream it. I, when I first played this, uh, that choice with the. She's going to draw you a picture. I think I chose Big Billy, like Woodsman. And I didn't know the other choice, which is she would draw a dick. But uh, I don't know how Twitch is going to be. How Twitch is going to be strict on that, but. It's fine. It's fine. Let's have a look. Okay, so one thing I kind of like and don't like about this game is that it, you kind of have to figure everything out yourself. Like the map, there's no, at least I'm certain that there's no like, I guess like markers in the world and there's no like path that you can take, I guess. It doesn't show you what path you have to take, you have to figure it out for yourself, which I kind of like. But it does mean I might get lost every now and again. I'm pretty sure I'm meant to be heading west, aren't we? So it is this direction. So if we're going west, those guys would probably be over to the right then, on the map. Wait, hold on. Yeah, it's east. 
Got my compass is saying west. Am I reading the compass wrong? Am I a moron? It's saying. Well, let me just turn around. Right, so that must be wrong then. I thought that little there's a little arrow there. I thought it was the direction I'm facing, but I'm wrong. So let's just fucking head west. And it looks like there's a path. There's that cache 306, like you said. That should be fine. So it should be a path, actually. Like the one I'm standing on. And that should be good. I don't think I need the compass anymore. And this is basically the entire game. Um, just walking through the woods, reporting shit, and stopping fires and stuff, and watching them when they do happen. Um, obviously there's a bit more to it than that, as we'll find out, but I'm not going to say anything. Uh, we're just going to carry on. And this game is beautiful! Fantastically beautiful. 